Hello everyone, Karnasa here. In this video, I will be landing Scrub Launch System, SLS for short, on the surface of the moon. But in my traditional style, I will be launching this upside down. I am absolutely not trying to jump on the hype train for the Space Launch Sist won't. I would never do such a thing to try and make my channel more popular. If you want to skip to the cinematic launch of this, it starts at 1 minute 4. Before then, I just needed to fill some extra time so I could throw in some mid-roll adverts. Currently on screen is the SLS that I have designed for landing on the surface of the moon. I went and took my upside down SLS launcher and decided to go a little bit ham with conformal decals. This entire craft is made out of procedural parts and conformal decals. I haven't used an SLS mod to build this. If you would like to download the craft file, I will be including it over on my Discord and there will be a link to that in the description of this video. Initial designs to launch SLS upside down to the moon proved problematic. However, after much head scratching and consulting my cats for engineering advice, I was able to come up with a design that did work. And with that, it was time to launch this mission. Cape Canaveral, the 2nd of September, 2022. Okay, I filmed this before the date got moved back again. Sitting at Launch Complex 39B, a rather imposing sight. This launch vehicle is 500 meters tall and weighs just over 150,000 tons on the launch pad, making it taller than seven Greg's Bakeries stacked and weighing more than an adult male African elephant. That height and mass allows me to use 26 super heavy clusters for the first stage and then 40 M1 vacuum optimized engines for the second stage, which allows me to launch 9,000 tons to low Earth orbit. As this rocket is very much an unconventional design, with the first stage being above the second stage, to avoid any unwanted collisions, decoupling the first stage while the engines were still burning was required. After 12 minutes and enough fuel left to power a go-kart for about 37 and a half seconds, the giant rocket that was supposed to somewhat look like SLS but ended up nothing like it due to the constraints of lifting actual SLS to space was in a 175 kilometer circular orbit of Earth. Now with the unusual payload deployed from the massive 110 meter long fairings, 10 Cobra H engines are fired on the translunar injection stage needing to perform a burn of 3160 meters per second in order to set SLS on course with the moon in three and a half days. With that burn completed and enough hydrolox remaining to perform a lunar capture, the mission to land SLS on the moon was looking like a terribly silly idea, but still one that could be achieved, at least within Kerbal's space program. I mean, it would really be quite preposterous to do this in real life, wouldn't it? Landing the entire space launch system on the moon? That's absolutely crazy. We can't even launch the rocket normally by itself. Joking aside, I am very excited for the real launch of this vehicle and for the next era of crewed space exploration. Once the vehicle arrives at the moon, it fires up the 10 Cobra H engines one last time to place the vehicle into a 100 km lunar orbit.
upon achieving a near polar orbit of the moon. Due to the inclination that I launched from Earth, I waited in orbit around the moon for a few days. I wanted to make sure that when we attempted to land the space launch system, that it was in the daytime. And I wanted to be on the near side of the moon so that we could get a rather pretty picture of the Earth as we were touched down upon the surface upside down. The last little section of this video will no longer be a cinematic as this is now going to be nothing but me landing the SLS from a lunar orbit all the way down to the surface. Much like the Artemis 1 mission, due to go ahead either today or tomorrow, depending on when I get this video out, this mission is completely uncrewed. And because of that, I'm just going to be leaving the SLS upside down on the surface of the moon for all eternity. With no pesky crew to worry about, I don't need to bother bringing it back. It would, however, be entirely possible for me to do so if I were to use the same launch vehicle that landed my Saturn V upside down on the surface of Mars, link to that short now, I would be more than capable of bringing the space launch system back. However, because I wanted to keep my sanity and launching that vehicle took over two hours, I decided against that. Talking about this actual landing now, the engines that I am currently using on the sides of SLS pointing in the upside down direction are actually RS-25 use, which is an engine that I have acquired from a mod called CH4. Now the reason why I needed to use a different engine, one that wasn't the standard RS-25 that SLS will be using, is in realism overhaul. The RS-25 can only be ignited on the ground with launch clamps attached. The RS-25U, however, from CH4 has six ignitions. The trade-off with the engine is it is slightly weaker and slightly less efficient, but I did need those ignitions to be able to land this. One other great thing about the RS-25U is that it is deeply throttleable, which actually makes landing this relatively easy in the grand scheme of things. Compared to landing the Saturn V upside down on the surface of the moon, which I think took me around 15 attempts, I was able to land this on the first attempt. But with that landing, that is the end of this video. I would like to thank my patrons for their continued support. And until next time, I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.